everyone wants to know what my favorite steroids are. I'm always using tesinanthate in my bulking cycles or tespropanate in my cutting cycles as a backbone. That being said, let's dive in. Primabolin, it's the most well-tolerated agent in terms of practical application and clinical studies that are out there. You're gonna be anti-catabolic on primabolin, which means in a calorie deficit, you ain't gonna lose your muscle. Or you can use it in a lean muscle gaining phase. Big mistake that people make on primabolin, they add an AI to it. When you deploy a protocol that has primabolin in it, it's going to decrease the estrogenic activity at the receptor site, therefore, no AI is needed. When you're on Primo or any other DHT derived steroids, the mission is keep that SHBG from crashing. If you have low SHBG and lots of free testosterone in your bloodstream, you're gonna be very annoyed most of the time. Estrogen regulates SHBG, also thyroid does. So make sure all these don't get too low, or you're gonna have problems. That's why blood work is essential when you're on your pills, your powders, and your anabolic potions. So you know when to crank up the gear, when to add in the ancillaries, when to just sit back, and relax because you know everything's going well because you feel great and the blood work looks awesome. When you're in a cutting phase and the calories are low, you need to roll out more primabolin. So that would look like three to 400 tests and 500 primabolin at the end of a cycle in the blast phase. When you're in a bulking phase, you don't need so many anabolics because you've obviously got the calories coming in to facilitate the anabolism and just grow like a monster. If you're using HCG on cycle with Primo and Test and you decide to increase the HCG, you're going to have to adjust your dosages with the Primabolin. In other words, you're gonna to need to up the ratio of Primo to Test. Nandrolone, either the DECA, the longer version, or the MPP, the shorter version. They're the same thing. Before my last Nandrolone cycle, I'd always had bicep tendon pain, which had gone on for years ever since I completely destroyed my elbow snowboarding. It was annoying because I couldn't do any wide grip rowing or pulling without it irritating my tendon. Anyway, it took years for the pain to go. Guess who fixed it? Thank you, Decker. Diet on Decker needs to be spot on because it promotes mineral retention. If you go out lazy on the diet and start eating fried food, junk food, all that kind of crap, you're gonna pay the price because it's gonna whack up the water retention, potentially leading to edema. If that happens, take some magnesium and eat clean because you're probably using Tess and Decker and it's going to act as a catalyst to aromatize, you wanna have an AI on hand. Keep an eye on the following, estradiol, progesterone, prolactin, TSH and IGF-1 numbers. Seek it in the blood work. For all therapeutic purposes, so you had a bit of a joint pain, go for 50 mg to 100 mg per week. Before I move on, I've got to stress this. You're gonna get a boatload of muscle on this stuff. Your working weight, and very, very soon, your warm-up weights. Test, Primo, Nandrolone is an awesome combination. However, if you stack them with hitting the like button, gains are multiplied by 10. Okay, third and final anabolic agent is Masteron. You thought I was gonna say Anavar, didn't you? It was a big toss up between the two, I'll be honest. If you are lean enough, it is extremely potent at increasing vascularity, preserving muscle tissue in a calorie deficit, and literally just sucking all the water out of your body so you look super peeled, dry and shredded. Plus, it's going to ramp up your CNS, so when you lift, you're gonna be lifting more than you normally would when in that calorie deficit. Is it a cutting steroid? By that, do you mean it's gonna burn fat on its own? No, it won't. It's a hardening agent. It's a cosmetic steroid. Mastron is going to mask, see, the clues in the name, E2 symptoms that's gonna enable you to flush out water. I'm thinking of running Mastron with Nandrolone at the start of my next bulking cycle. Mastron is a DHT derivative, Decker is a 19 nor, Nandrolone is a 19 nor. I've just said Decca for so many years. So the pathways are different, so they work extremely well together. The Mastron is not going to build much muscle, the Decker's gonna do that. But the Mastron's great for removing the excess water that you will develop under the skin from the Nandrolone. So when you're cutting, get near 10% and then use Mastron to blast. Or if you are muscle gaining, use the Mastron at the start of a pre-blast phase. Equal ratios to begin 
working with on the Masteron with the testosterone. But generally, it's run far higher than testosterone throughout the cycle. Remember, we always want to start low. Go get your blood work done after a month, and then you can crank up the dosage. The long-term use of Masteron, that's why I don't do it in a TRT phase, is chemically not good. You're altering your lipid profile. And overall, I would not recommend a potent DHT to use long-term. You know what? I just can't do it. I cannot finish this video without mentioning Anavar. Oxandrolone. It really came in third joint with the Masteron. It has a great reputation for increasing strength whilst giving you a very hard look. It's going to make you look leaner than you actually are. You will get noticeably stronger and you're going to put on muscle very easily. It is actually shown to decrease subcutaneous fat more than testosterone. It's going to decrease your appetite and completely trash your liver and your kidney if you stay on it for too long. I'm not sure why I find that funny. Anavar itself is prescribed post-surgery and has hundreds of scientific studies demonstrating increased collagen synthesis, accelerated wound healing, and recovery. I've used 20 to 40 milligrams a day with great success. Often, if I wanna bring up a certain body part, I will use it on that specific day. For example, wanna bring up the delts, I'll pop it under the tongue. Well, I'll crush it with my teeth first. Leave it under the tongue to dissolve. It makes a fantastic pre-workout. That way you can hammer your delts, grow the delts, and then on the next day, if you're doing legs, leave out the anavar. Do it again the next time you do delts. And then as the cycle goes on, you can reintroduce the anavar to more days of the week. Overall, the dosages should be determined by evaluating two things. What results would you like to see and what drugs are you stacking together? There's other factors to consider. Yes, health profile, health status, what side effects you're prone to, how much experience you've had using steroids. There's actually quite a lot, isn't there? But for the simplicity of this video, we're just gonna go with the two I mentioned. It would be wise to stack two drugs that work very well together. That means they work through different mechanisms to provide a synergistic effect. For example, stacking DECA with Primo. You don't stack DECA with Trembolone. I did that once. No. The best way to maximize progress while staying healthy in your cycle is to know what individually works for you. The reason I know all this is because I've tried all this stuff on myself. Someone might respond horribly to all my favorite compounds just because they're wired up different. So experience really is the only way to know. If you are considering physique enhancement in a safe way, using special medicine, and you need guidance to make the overall most effective choices, get in touch with me. I've got a link in the description. Click that link and I'll get back to you. If you've already applied for coaching or you've been messaging me and I've just completely ghosted you, I'm not being rude. I actually did reply to you. Go and check your spam folder. I'm sure the email has ended up in there because I always reply back to everyone. The next video coming up is how to blast steroids safely. This smart protocol took me years to figure out. See you in that next video, brother.